Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short video, uh, a follow on from two previous videos, one that dealt with the addition rule and the other that dealt with the multiplication rule, is going to combine these two rules together, okay? or well it's a video that has an example that requires us to combine these two rules together uh, to, s uh, to calculate a more complicated, let's say, probability. And I suppose the scenario that we're going to be uh, considering is uh, we have 200 employees. Okay? Uh, each employee was given two, let's say, appraisals. One was in relation to their technical performance on the job, and the other was in relation to their interpersonal skills. An employee could be categorized uh, into one of three categories depending on their technical performance. Their performance could either be poor, reasonable, or good. And in relation to their interpersonal skills, they were also categorised on whether they were below average, average, or had above average interpersonal skills. Uh, what we'd like to do is, in this particular example, is we'd like to explore a scenario where we have to use the addition and the multiplication rule. Okay. So what I'd like to do is this, is I'd like to, uh, and in this situation here, okay, uh, I suppose in this situation here, we're going to be doing the first run of this, uh, let's say, with replacement. Okay? That's key for us, which we know is going to be an indication that the events are somewhat independent of each other. Okay? And what I'm interested in is, what is the probability? Okay? We're going to randomly select two people from this particular cohort. What's the probability that the first person selected? Okay? F for the first. Let me actually write up that. F will signify first, and S will signify second. Okay. So what's the probability that the first person selected okay, has average interpersonal skills? Average. Okay. And, or let's say, yeah, has average interpersonal skills. Okay. And the second person selected, let's say the second person selected, okay. Uh, has, let's say, reasonable, reasonable, okay, reasonable performance, technical performance. Okay. Now this is without. This is with replacement. Okay. So what we know is that when we select the first person, they're put back into the mix. Okay. So once they're put back into the mix, we know that the second person is also selected from two hundred individuals. So there has been no change in the sample size when it comes to the second selection, in which case the two in events are independent, and it's simply, because it's an AND, it's simply the product of the individual probabilities. So this becomes the probability that the first person selected has average interpersonal skills times the probability that the second person selected has reasonable, reasonable performance. Okay? Well, the probability that the first person selected has average is how many average people are there? Well, there's 20, 60, 20 and 40 is 60, plus 40 gives us 90. So we have 90 chances out of a total of 200 individuals. And that probability is multiplied by the probability that the second selection is reasonable. Don't forget, the first person was put back in with replacement. Okay. So the probability that the second person is reasonable is there's still 200 people there. And of them 200 people, we have 20, 40, say 20, 60, 80 of them have reasonable performance. So the probability that the second person selected has reasonable performance is 80 chances out of 200. Okay. And when we do this out, uh, multiplying fractions top by top and bottom by bottom, we have 90 times 80 gives us 70, 7,200. That's to be divided by, uh, let's say, that's 200 times 200, which gives us a value of it's 0 0.18. You have an 18% likelihood that if we select two people from a cohort of 200, okay, where people have, be ca have been categorized on technical performance scale and on personal scale, we have an 18% chance that the first person will have average performance, or sorry, average interpersonal skills, and the second person will have reasonable performance. And don't forget, we know that the first person was put back into the mix because the experiment was done with replacement. Okay. So let's do the same experiment, but this time let's do it without replacement. Okay. So we're going to do this without replacement. So let's just write down the probability again. The probability that we're interested in is what's the probability that the first person selected 
has average interpersonal skills and the second person selected has reasonable reasonable performance mm -hmm. yeah okay so it's the and so minimum it is the minimum it's going to be the product of two probabilities but this is with without replacement okay so out of the 200 individuals okay out of the 200 individuals when we make our first selection and when we don't put the first person back into the mix we know that there's only 199 individuals to choose from with respect to the second selection okay so in which case we know it, this is the conditional version of the multiplication rule so this becomes the probability that the first person selected is the average times the probability that the second is reasonable reasonable knowing that the first selection was average okay now the probability of the first selection is average is straightforward enough okay we could choose these these or these okay giving us i suppose uh, 50 opportunities or 50 favorable outcomes out of 200 so that probability becomes 50 out of 200 okay now let's have a look at this next one the probability of the second selection is reasonable is dependent on the first selection and knowing that the first selection was average okay now let's see what could happen if the first selection okay was also reasonable okay in other words it was an average person but was one of these people here okay well then in relation to second selection okay, we only have 20 40 which is 60 and 19 people here to choose from which is 79 possibilities okay? that's one thing that could have happened with respect to the first knowing the first piece of information but the other thing that could have happened in relation to the first is that they were these people here or these people here in other words they were not reasonable in which case the full complement of reasonable individuals are still in the mix so there's two things that can happen here so we need to calculate the probability of this yeah so this becomes this probability here let me write it down again the probability of the second is reasonable okay, knowing that the first was average is the same thing as the probability what's the probability of the second is reasonable okay knowing that the first was average okay and reasonable okay or the first was average and not reasonable it's kind of a little bit complicated here okay but what we have is the information that we've been provided this conditional information okay that the force was average can be broken up into two possibilities the force was average and reasonable or the force was average and not reasonable that covers all the possibilities in relation to the person who was who was the first selection they're either reasonable they're average and I mean but they're reasonable or they're average and they're not reasonable if that makes sense okay so now what we have is an or now an or is when we have mutual exclusion well if you think about it you're either in here or you're in here They're two mutually exclusive events so it's simply the sum of the individual probabilities so this becomes the probability that the second is reasonable knowing that the force is average and reasonable plus the probability of the second is reasonable knowing that the first was average and not reasonable if I just write that down again this becomes the probability that the second is reasonable is reasonable knowing that the first was average and reasonable okay and the or becomes plus the probability that the second is reasonable knowing that the first was average and not reasonable okay. which from a probability perspective is simply well the probability that the second is reasonable knowing that the force was average and reasonable so the probability of the second is reasonable in other words down here 
Knowing that the first selection was average and reasonable, in other words, they're in here, so that just leaves 19 of these here, gives us a total number of 79 to choose from. Okay, and don't forget the first one's been put back in the mix out of 199, so we have 79 chances out of 199. Okay, plus the probability that the second is reasonable, knowing that the first is average and not reasonable. Means that the second selection, okay, well, we're interested in being reasonable, so they're down here. But what we know about the first one is that they were above average, they were along here, but they were not reasonable, okay, so they were outside of there, okay, which means that the full complement of reasonables are still there, which is 80. The first person wants to put back in the mix, so there's 199, so we have 80 chances out of 199. That gives us 80 chances out of 199, okay? So now, the probability that we really want is the probability that the first is average and the second is reasonable. So this probability now becomes up here. Okay? This becomes, well, the probability that the second is reasonable knowing that the first is average. We've just worked that out. It's a little bit complicated. Is 79 chances out of 199 plus 80 chances out of 199, okay? Let's do that. So 79 chances divided by 199 plus, here we have 80 chances divided by 199 gives us a total of, I suppose, oh, whoops, let's do this well. 79 and 80 is 159. That's 159 chances out of 199, okay? Uh, so this is, this becomes, I'll just, I'll just break this off here. This becomes 50 chances over 200 times we have uh, 159 chances out of 199, right? which gives us a probability of well, 50 times 159, sorry, 50 times 159 divided by 200 times 199 gives us, we have a 0.19 which is 0 0.20 chance of this happening. It's about a 20% chance of that happening. Okay. So guys, I know this one, this particular example here was a little bit more complicated, the without replacement case. Okay. But the important thing here is to realize is that uh, one of two things can happen, yeah? Okay. In relation to the second selection, knowing the first piece of information. Okay. Uh, the second selection, okay, okay. Uh, the first piece of information is either one of the second selections or, or it's not. So it gives us two possibilities. And that's where I've introduced the or here in this particular situation. Okay. Uh, guys, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this example was an example where we had to apply both the addition and the multiplication rule uh, to, to our particular scenario. Uh, I hope this was somewhat helpful, okay? uh, and sure, uh, there will be another video following this up where we move on and we have a look at the addition and multiplication rule, but from a Bayes' theorem perspective. Okay, once again guys, thanks for your time. Bye-bye.